Yeah, I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those lucky guys that I, I got to hear the album already. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, m- multiple times. And yeah. it's always a pleasure to talk to you. It's always a pleasure to see you. And it's even a bigger pleasure to listen to some brand new Dark Tranquility. Yeah. And it feels good. It, does it feel good on your end to finally put something out after oh. time? Yeah, it really does. I mean, um, yeah, it, it, it was a long and kind of a you know difficult uh, writing process, as it always is. But um, yeah, it feels amazing that it's now finally out and we can go out and play these new songs and all that stuff like finally happening. Like Not like last time where we just released an album and sat home and did not much at, <laughs> of, at all. <laughs> yeah, did some music videos. There were some music videos. True, true, true. There was that. So let me start yeah. off by asking you this. End Time Signals is the name of the record. Yeah. I, I find this album to be perhaps one of the darkest records you guys have ever released. Not yeah. necessarily from, uh, and when I mean dark, I don't mean like the album is like a black metal record. That's not what I mean. No. I mean, the, no. the mood of the record is, is very dark. Uh, how does the title of the album connect with the lyrical content on the album and with that overall darkness that that I felt listening to this record? I think uh, what kind of struck us um, after the pandemic kind of ended, we started touring, you know, and uh, our first tours were in, Eastern Europe, we were in Ukraine, we were in Belarus, and then we were home for a week. Then we went to um, to North America, and week into that tour, like the war broke out in Ukraine, and all of our friends were already, you know, all of a sudden like in a war zone. And then for some reason, like after two years of being away from everything, like it was really difficult to kind of realize that yeah, you're still just a you know dancing, singing monkey here on a stage, you know where everybody else is worried and like, I don't know, like it felt weird just providing entertainment when, I don't know, I, I felt very helpless and um, kind of like felt like, yeah, what, can we do something? Is there something that can come of this? Can we, can we, I don't know, be, be part of something? I don't know. It, it, I felt really helpless and it kind of sp- Spiraled us into like I don't know like some kind of mild depression even. Um, so going into this record, we we tried to kind of think about that still, and 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 of course not much has changed. Is that has perhaps gotten worse? Um, so yeah, there was a lot of kind of just basic feelings of despair uh, as we were writing, not because of how difficult it is to write an album or anything like that. But like, what, what, how can we make this impactful and emotional the way that we feel, you know, right now? Uh, how can we really tap into those emotions properly? And I think this album became very uncompromising in that sense. Like we, we went all in, you know, when it came to kind of how we actually felt and how, how it felt to, to write an album and how, how it felt to write an album at this point in time. And um, so, yeah, it, it, it became very dark. And I think like I started writing lyrics kind of early so that Johan and Martin had something to kind of go off of and that inspired them to, to go even darker musically. And then I rewrote some lyrics and it just became this black hole of misery. No, not really, but, um, but it, it um, yeah, it, it, but it felt good. Like I, um, I remember when we started hearing like mixes and stuff like that of, of some of the songs, we weren't like, all right, now it all kind of comes together. You know, we, we work in a very kind of like a different way where we, we all kind of work separately and then we come together and then we separately again. And then all of a sudden, like the mix kind of just makes it all uh, become one. And uh, then we realized that we, uh, we had managed to express what we were talking about all along and uh, what we, kind of discussed as we were writing it. In a lot of times when I hear a Dark Tranquility record, uh, I I find that the melodic side of the sound kind of thins out a little bit of the heavier side of the sound, balancing the two quite well. On on this record, I didn't get that vibe. I felt like the album was perhaps a little bit thicker, a little bit more dense uh, on the heavier side. And the, the melodic side was not really diffusing it. It was rather enhancing that darkness of feeling that the record has allowing the heavier sound behind it kind of push it forward. Uh, yeah. does, that, does that come from that, that state of mind that doesn't only impact the lyrics, it also impacts the sound? Yeah, and it, it's interesting that 
you mentioned this because yeah, that's how it felt too. And also, I mean, it's it's it also a matter of now, like the last two albums were mostly written by Anders, and uh, here we have a a new album written uh, exclusively by Martin and and Johan, and so so we could yeah write in a different way, um, think about melodies in a different way where we're leading into something instead of like doing uh things are that are immediate you could kind of build up to something or or create a, a vibe or a or an emotion that, that that kind of gets paid off in the chorus or something like that rather than kind of immediately getting into it so uh so i think that that um made the album way heavier as well and it and it really suited yeah the whole overall vibe of it for sure and then we have your vocals uh, I, I already pre-recorded my review, and, and on my review, I said that okay. this album, from your standpoint vocally, it, it felt to me like two souls in one single body. In terms oh, of what well, I okay. got, in terms of what I got from the clean vocals versus what I got from the, the harsh vocals, because yeah. it felt at times like like it was two different uh, pieces of the same puzzle fighting one another for for supremacy in terms of which one controls the other. Uh, I, I thought it was a really interesting dynamic that I hadn't seen from you before because it got really emotional. It was almost like both of them were pouring their hearts out to see which one wins the hearts of the fans almost. It, it, <laughs> it felt like this duality there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I think that goes actually like because Martin was very much involved in the vocal melodies and stuff like that because he's you know he's the kind of the main composer of everything so so we kind of wrote those things together and we realized that you know let's put maximum effort into making sure that we can express what it is that we want to express that it should feel just right for the songs so we worked on that a lot and it, so it it was just like a matter of like i think normally I, we would go for a song and it, it has to be heavy and it's you know angry and screaming and all that stuff and then there's some some part that just like requires a different vibe you know and then you 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 uh, you know do some some clean singing or something like that but this was more um thought through and and we kind of constructed the songs around it um with that in mind from the from the start and we we worked yeah different versions of of all the songs through, throughout the, the the writing process but um, it was always a part of the songs, even you know. Whereas times before, where it's just a, like an afterthought or something that, yeah, we'll we'll fix that later, you know. Um, so it just made sense for for all the songs to kind of lyrically and um, melodically just make sense, and it has to fit into the song and, and make I don't know, makes makes sense to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and I think uh. that that. that wonderfully like i said it was almost like there was an angel in in the in a demon one on each shoulder <laughs> vocally through the whole time that i'm listening to this record and and obviously the change in members has always an impact on any band yeah. uh, how how do you think the fans are going to feel that impact on on this record I, I'm, I'm really curious um so far the people I've, I've played it to you know and um it feels like this is, is like a really strong album and and also yeah like less compromise and kind of more, um, I don't know, more, more DT than we've been for a while. <laughs> Some have said, so I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious. I think, you know, the first two singles were um, very much appreciated. And, uh, but I know that, you know, the, the album has so many different sides to it. Um, there are two more singles coming out before the album drops and uh, those kind of show a, a different side as well. So uh, I'm, I'm, I could not be more proud uh, of what we have done, and I and I have a very strong feeling that it's um, it's going to be something that people really are going to get into um, because it, it it felt very um, I don't know like we were so incredibly proud of it. We were sitting in the studio in in Fascination Street after we had like the proper mix, and we were debating like whether or not to do like 
10 songs maybe just do a you know quick uh, get in get out uh, all killer no filler kind of album or if it should be something longer then we decided to kind of put everything in in there um against uh, the council of our uh, record company but but we just we, we couldn't we couldn't kill any of our darlings basically we just felt so strongly about the 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 of the vibe of the album should be like a complete thing and not just like yeah let's take the 10 most important songs or something like that because we felt that there were no songs normally we will take out a song and use it as a bonus track or something like that for something that just where we have another song that's doing the same kind of thing but i don't think uh there were any songs like that on this album so we decided to kind of put everything out there yeah i'm not gonna lie to you when i saw the track listing in the in the length of the album i was like wow almost uh i mean not at an hour mark but very no. close to the hour mark yeah. But then once I started listening to the record, th this is the longest album that feels the shortest to me because it's not like I was listening to it for like 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. and, and I don't think you can really paint the full picture of this record without the songs that are currently in it. You really need no. that journey in order for the experience uh, to be complete. And then you close yeah. off the record with False Reflection. Are you a very reflective kind of guy? I guess I am. I mean, that's the reason I, I write. <laughs> I think I just... Uh try to yeah try to understand who i am uh, the older i get and uh, and kind of uh, and yeah and of course reflect on all the things that we do and um, um so yeah that's 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 part of it but also the the song is basically about like how how easy it is to to um kind of create a, an, an image for yourself and i see that in in younger people uh, more so than in me where you you try so hard to kind of project something that maybe you are not and uh, how easy it is to just look at yourself and that you're in your the photos of you and think that that's all you are and uh, of course you're not so it's uh, it's kind of about that I'm getting worried as a you know parent I, <laughs> you know? <laughs> me, me too me too uh, <laughs> and and I see a lot of that also in relationships where where yeah. we try to we, we create an image of what we think the other person wants to see but not necessarily yeah. the image of ourselves and yeah. that's why I think a lot of relationships end up not working out because once yeah. once you get tired of of pretending to be somebody you're not uh yeah then they can sue for everything that you are. So it's and, and that should be fine, but it's not always. <laughs> it's no. not always. It's not always <laughs> a, a good thing. Well, when uh, you guys come into a to a record, do you ever think about the expectations that people have of what a dark tranquility album should be? Not necessarily sound, but should be. No. I mean, of course, it's always there, but I think it's it's more what we want it to be. I mean, it's it's our expectation of what an album an album should be, you know. Um you think about it like, oh, it has to be kind of the opposite of the last album or, you know, it should be kind of extension of, of something that we've done in the past or it should be brand new or, uh, you know, revolutionary or whatever. You you have all these ideas about, about what it is. So, and I think, I don't, I don't mean, we've been lucky to have fans who are with us all the way and it's not like uh, everybody's screaming about, you know, the gallery or stuff like that. They're, you know, fine with where we are going. So it, we feel kind of confident that we will get it right eventually. But getting there is it's increasingly harder, of course, you know, just because you've, you've done it so many times now that, like, how do we, you come up with something new um, or, you know, something that just feels as good as it used to do, you know, when you started when you were younger. But uh, but I think we we did, even though it, this was difficult, you know, I'm not, no lie there, but uh, at the same time, like the, the reward was so much greater when it, we kind of pushed through and it, it happened. And, and also like with the new guys in the band, like Johan uh, taking over a more a writing part, like Joachim playing drums, who's just incredible. And Christian, our old, old friend here from Gothenburg, who just has this incredible kind of sense of rhythm and, and kind of and, and musicality. It just um, it became so inspiring to 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 write, kind of write for us, of course, but also for for all of us in the band. You know, like yeah, this is the album we want to kind of take this new lineup out on the road with. You know, um, that was super cool, and so it's fun, and it's great now that everybody's beyond excited, and like next week we start the festival uh, season and the touring, so uh, we're gearing up and getting ready. Is the the the, uh, the dark tranquility canvas uh, as big as you would like it to be in order for for you to be able to be 
creative within that realm and not necessarily having to look outside? I, I, I've always said that I've, I've, I've felt like I, I can do pretty much whatever I want in Dr. Quillity. And I, um, I'm really happy that we, we have that, as you say, like a broad canvas or like just possibilities where we can do anything. Uh, but of course, I also started three other bands. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so, kind of where my question is coming. Yeah, from. Yeah, <laughs> but, so, but but for you know for thirty plus years, I I never really felt that, and I I still don't feel it. But I'm I'm having a blast uh, exploring other things anyway. But uh, I've always kind of felt that what we do, you know, when it comes to kind of you know the proggier parts that I love and the more mellow stuff that I really enjoy, a little more, more synthy stuff or the super heavy, super fast stuff that I love. I like everything I love about this kind of music we can do. And uh, that is amazing to me. You, you mentioned about writing the lyrics, inspiring some of the sound with it. Do, do the lyrics also inspire you vocally in terms of the approach that you're going to take on yeah. any point of the song? Yeah, of course, of course. Like that, that's how I, I kind of come up with it. I'm, I'm sitting here screaming and uh, or or trying to think about what what I sh what it should sound like and those what kind of words kind of work. You know? so so it's it's a back and forth like between, um, yeah, how to how to sing and what to sing basically. Is there a song on this album that stands out in your mind, and not necessarily from a difficulty standpoint, but in order to get to that emotional crescendo mm -hmm. that every song on this album offers. There were, there were many that were, that were kind of difficult. Like uh, the next single is Not Nothing. And that was one of the hardest songs to kind of- uh, One of my get. favorite on the record. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, um, it was just one of those songs that like was in limbo for, for the longest time. And then we kind of solved it by the end. And so that was a, a challenge, but I think it, it, it turned out great and uh, Again, with great like kind of insight from from Martin Brenstrom, who who kind of like redid some of the vocal parts just because they fitted better with keyboards that I had not yet heard, so <laughs> that kind of stuff. But and then then of course like I think the most difficult song was uh, "One of Us Is Gone," which was kind of like this, yeah, a, a song that it was probably our biggest and most complex composition uh, that I can think of, and um, that that took months to get right and uh and it was just a matter of like finding that right mood feeling vibe and to to do the song justice um so those are the things that i i think about you know when i hear a song or we were start working on it's like it, this has to be as good as it possibly can get and i it, and and so easy for me to screw it up you know if i love the song and i could go i, I could I, I could screw this up just making it bland or something like that so it's just a matter of like yeah um, making sure that it's it is as good as it can possibly be uh, you, you mentioned several times the difficulties uh, of making this album uh, is, is this the most challenging record uh, from a dark tranquility standpoint that you've worked on no, um, there's definitely been more difficult albums in terms of just, you know, like back and forth in terms of creativity, you know, among, among the guys in the band, um, which is like, it's, it's, that's more frustration, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, I'm not feeling this, I'm not feeling this. Here we were, all of us were really on the same page all the way. It's just a matter of like getting it right. So in that case like without any conflict whatsoever we made this album but it was still super difficult <laughs> like <laughs> just to to get right but i i think it, it wasn't most difficult but it was the most emotional without a doubt and, and with that emotion i i felt like this album each song has its own emotion attached to it its own its own message but its own emotion attached to that same message was it hard for you guys to pick singles when when each song is so unique within itself that it's really not necessarily a representation of the collective. Oh yeah. Yeah. It always is, you know, it's like, Oh, what song represent the entire album? It's like that. That's, that's always very difficult. And we usually talk with a label about that kind of stuff, but, um, but it's, it's really something that, that Martin, you know, as a main writer, but also like producer, producer of the album was very adamant about like making sure that there's a different vibe so whenever we start a song, like we have to have, like there's a, an emotional core through some of the melodies or some of the chord progressions or whatever it is in a song that just inspires us. And you just go like, oh, we haven't done this. Okay, let's let's follow this thread wherever it leads and 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 build something around it. So that's why all the songs had this very, 
yeah, very different kind of vibe to it. Um, so yeah, of course it, it's different. So the, the plan is, yeah, for two more singles and two of them are very different from the first two. So hopefully you get um, a bit of the enti entirety of the album, but you know, it, it's going to be there in a, in a matter of weeks. So it's all good. I, I don't think anybody needs even singles. Just the fact that you guys announced an album, everybody just wants to pre-order link. That's, that's all. <laughs> that's how I work. Like uh, my favorite bands. I hear one single, I go like, yep, yep. Ready, ready. I'm there I'm on day one. I don't need singles. I really don't. I'm, I'm not yeah, a fan I, of it, the whole concept. But I, I, to be yeah. honest with you, I, I, I don't mind the singles, but I don't want to hear too many of them because no. I want the experience of sitting down and listening to the record for the first yeah. time yeah. to be as much of a surprise, to be as engaging as possible. And if I know 50% of the record going in, it kind of, yeah. I don't know, it hurts the experience, in my opinion. Yeah, I hate it when I have the urge to kind of skip a song just because I've heard it enough, and it's and I so I try not, I try to never do that. But um, yeah, but if, I mean, obviously, it is a good thing when it comes to, you know, spreading music around, especially on digital platforms. So uh, I guess we have to suffice as old folks who like it, like it the old way, where you go out on a Friday and you buy the album and you get home and you listen to it the way the band intended it to be heard. <laughs> And you and you mentioned the other projects, the other bands that you're in. Uh, yeah. Having the ability to have those bands that give you, you know, uh, give you a different uh, area to play with vocally, that allow you to yeah. do different things. Uh, like Cemetery Skyline is a very different band from Dark Tranquility or The Halo Effect. Uh, yeah. How much does that help you with the way you have to perform within Dark Tranquility? Having the ability to exercise your range with two completely different bands. I think it, it just maybe it's given me a, a bit more confidence. Um, and also I, I practiced way more just because uh, Cemetery Skyline was such a different and kind of like a challenging project to, to, to start. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to write a fucking rock and roll album now. Like I, <laughs> that was beyond difficult for me. I, I, that was the hardest I've, I've <laughs> worked on an album ever. But um so yeah, I mean, yeah, that kind of opened up new ideas, of course, you know, and um, and also, yeah, I think confidence and and, and also, of course, practice. You know, I've, I've been singing way more than I ever have uh, the last couple of years since we started that project, and that kind of went into kind of like a, a different confidence when we wrote the songs for the DT album and and even some of the stuff on the new Halo Effect album. So, yeah, it, it feels better, and also like I yeah, I've, I've recorded so much that just the, the whole recording. Pro, um, process, you know, of, of being in the studios, like the, the way we think about songs and the way we mix it, the way we use it, it's, it's better now because I've, I've been in a couple of studios in the last couple of years and I've learned a lot just from the, the, that experience alone. You, you mentioned that you guys are going to uh, be going on the road and part of that going on the road is going to be North America. You're going to be touring yes. with Amorphous in North America. Yes. Uh, back together. Uh, I yeah. saw you guys a while ago, a while ago before the pandemic, also touring yeah. together. You're going to be playing at Proc Power, a return to Proc Power for you now with a with a different hat on, if you will. Uh, yeah, and, a, and a different hat next year too. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of imagined that that was exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> uh, how much of this new record is going to be the focal point of the set list for this uh, North American tour? Yeah, we we are right now kind of discussing it and working on set list back and forth, and there's a, a constant kind of um, talk about it. And we so we we're gonna try out some of the new songs now during the summer at the festivals, and then um, then we release the album when we play Summer Breeze Festival here in, in Germany, and that's gonna be awesome. It's like on the day of the release, we start playing like the new songs for the first time proper, and uh, and um, so we're gonna. Play a lot of the new stuff, obviously, but also we want to change things up because we've been, it feels like we've been playing the same old songs for forever. You know, it's really difficult to just take a few songs out and then you'll hear people going like, oh, come on, I wanted to hear that song, you know, <laughs> and, and we, we're not going to play for two hours, you know, um, but we're going to change it up a lot. And uh, so we've been starting to practice some some songs that I, I barely remember and it feels weird but the new guys in the band are incredible they are fast learners it's easy and it sounds fantastic so uh i really look forward to putting to, together this like a proper set and we're working on new visuals and stuff like that for the for the whole tour which is going to look incredible so yeah th this you know you have to kind of 
take big steps with every tour. Otherwise, like you go like, okay, let's do it. Can we do this again? And I, I think um, the band and, and all of us are, are more excited about touring for this album than we have in, in a very long time, that I feel. So uh, it's going to be good. One last question for you. Uh, when you're taking some of those songs out of the set list, what song you cannot touch? Is there a song that come rain or high water, that track better be on that set list? Otherwise, you're going to have a riot on your hands. Um, I mean, I think we have played Misery's Crown on every single show since the album since that album came out. We just we really didn't want to at first, and then we played it like yeah on the second or third show of that tour, and we just tried it out, and we have been playing it ever since. So yeah, that that we just cannot take out. But that, I think that's the only one actually. That's the only one that has a, a reserved seat. So fans yeah. will know that they will get that one during the yeah. North American tour. Everything else sure. is up for grabs. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. As always, a pleasure. Uh, I'll see you in Toronto uh, during that North American run with Amorphous. Oh, Toronto, yes. I'm looking awesome. forward to it. Uh, Me too. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys and looking forward to that show. So thank you very much for your time today and all the best with this release. Always, man. Love you guys. Care, man. Thank you. Bye.